At the end of the last video on this Filco 3862, I had said that I was going to just put the restored chassis back in the cabinet and put it away for safekeeping while I got back to other projects. However, when I went to reinstall the chassis, I realized the cabinet was in pretty poor condition and really needed to be stabilized. So I took some time and glued up along the bottom. Some of this uh, faux finish here was really starting to split off. Now, I think that's because the feet were gone and this bottom edge was really getting abused so I threw on some felt feet just temporarily just to get this thing up off the ground when it's upright. And uh, also a lot of separation all along here where there's plywood so I clamped and, or glued and clamped that up. But there's suctions that are missing. And I remembered I got a good tip when I was working on a similar Filco radio a few months ago had the same same issue which is that popsicle sticks I made out of pretty good wood I think it's white birch and they're just about perfect dimension as the sec sections of this old plywood so I can glue those up and then trim them down I'm also missing a bit of trim here so I was hunting around my local Joanne Fabrics and found that they had a box of assorted balsa and basswood of all different dimensions. Now, balsa wood's fairly useless. It's just way too light like this. It's like styrofoam, but basswood's decent enough for trim. So I hunted around and found a piece that seems to me a perfect match to the original on the other side. So all I gotta do is glue that up, cut it off to length, and there we go. So once I get that done, the only major problem left with this is the split. Now I don't know what happened. This side must have gotten caved in or something at some point. Unfortunately, uh, it must have been like this for so long that the wood has gotten like permanently warped. Is I, I cleared away the debris here, and there's really no nothing to prevent this from going back down level, except that the wood is warped. In other words, there's no obstruction in the way there had been some wood chip debris in there. So I think what I'm going to try doing is soak the wood a little bit. Maybe steam it a little, get a little bit more bendy. And then try to clamp it somehow and get this down. I think this side needs to come up just a little bit. But mostly this side needs to come down to get these two sides level. Once they are, I can put a glue block on the inside get that stabilized and then uh, I don't know see how things stand maybe I will just go ahead now that the weather's gradually getting warmer I think we may be well into the 40s next week I think I will go ahead and just strip what little finish remains off of here and start prepping it for some grain filler and toner lacquer it just shouldn't take very long to do there's not much to it just mask off the front and work on the sides I received a message a few days ago from a fellow Filco forum member that I sure wasn't expecting. He said that not only did he have a dial glass, but the whole dial bezel assembly that I was welcome to. It just arrived in the mail today, and it's a perfect fit, so that saves me a lot of hassle of trying to clean the rust off of mine and track down a new dial glass. So thanks very much, John. I finished installing a new piece of trim on the one side and going around the front edge and repairing the missing layers of lamination as needed. So really all that's left in terms of repairing the cabinet is dealing with this. So uh, as I was saying earlier, I'm going to try to steam that and clamp it down and see if I can mash that back into shape. I've been brushing water onto the split for the last couple hours and the wood has got to the point now where I think it's pliable enough that I can close that joint up with some pressure. So I'm going to spread some glue into the joint on the back side, take uh, some sheets of wax paper on either side, some blocks of hardwood and clamp this and squeeze it closed and let it sit for probably a day or more with the clamps on there to keep that pressure going while the glue sets up and the moisture evaporates out. I 
Alright, that ought to hold it. And now we wait. This is another great example of why I work on multiple projects at once because I'm going to let this sit for at least 24 hours before loosening up these clamps. Alright, that worked out even better than I'd hoped for. It's perfectly level now. It's a slight gap, I suppose, but when I get around to the grain filling, that will get filled right in, or I suppose I could use a little bit of wood putty. And now for the task that I've really been dreading on this cabinet, which is to try to clean up the front. First thing I did was wipe it down with some mineral spirits just to clean it off pretty good. And now, it may seem crazy, but I'm actually sanding it down with some 600 grit sandpaper. This is a photo finish, so of course you can't strip it or you'll take it right off. But there is a bit of a clear coat of lacquer over the photo finish, so you can sand it. Looks a bit uh, yellowy brownish here, but that's just because I think the lacquer has yellowed over the years, plus probably some old, uh, you know, wax and oils and whatnot on here that the uh, mineral spirits didn't clean off. So the reason I'm doing this is, one, to cut down the alligatoring a bit, two, to get off some paint flux, like this latex paint here, and three, there are some light f splotches of something. It's like clear, but almost like a clear overspray of lacquer that got on this. These are actually like raised dots. They had this stored in the garage, um, the seller I picked this up from, so maybe it's overspray of who knows what. So I just did this section right here and it's looking better. Now the, these cracks are more pronounced because uh, there's sanding residue in them, of course I'll clean that off. And then I have a little touch-up kit, I'll show you um, in a moment has little cups of ascending color starting from light tan to almost black. So I can um, dab those on and mix them as needed to get the, a good color match. And then I'll touch it up. Uh, this, this edge here will all be painted black so I don't need to worry about that. But really the spots in here, along the bottom, and up into here and maybe there. And uh, any other place it seems worn or chipped. I finished sanding it down, got rid of all the high spots and all the crud, nice and smooth now, and didn't take off any of the photo finish. I wipe on a little mineral spirits here so you can get a preview of how it's going to look when I get done with it. Not too shabby. Didn't even ruin the Foco logo. Looks like it, well, it looks like I'll have to do less touch-up than I thought, too. Which is good, because it's not something I'm particularly good at. In fact, I uh, really don't have much experience with it at all. So, here's my little touch-up kit. I'll put a link in the description of where I got this stuff. I've only used it once before. Uh, the idea is you pop these caps open and it's kind of like watercolor in there, although it's not really water-based, I don't think. Um, then you can use them straight out of these cups after you mix them up, or you can take a, you know, a few drops from each, put them onto let's say, a piece of plastic and mix them up like they were artist oil paints. So, uh, I'm going to find a color, or mix a color, that matches the lightest color on this and touch up all the voids with that first. So, maybe a color like in here. Now I'll take a darker color and use in areas like, say, here. And use the darkest color for, say, these vertical stripes down in here. I'm not exactly an artist, so <laughs> I'll do the best I can. I spent about an hour touching up the front, and I think it looks a whole lot better. Not perfect, but uh, I think I've spent as much time on this as I care to. So I will let this sit overnight and 
dry up as the instructions recommend. Then I'll clear coat the front with a coat of sanding sealer and then move on to the rest of the cabinet which, which will involve sanding down this trim a bit, stripping the rest of the cabinet, and paint this black and then start uh, with sealing and grain filling and then finally toner lacquer on the body of the cabinet.